Welcome back, Farouk here at Direct Hub. I hope you're doing well and you're pushing through your FE exam prep. So you're doing those practice questions, going at your own pace, taking the breaks you need to unwind and refresh before your next study session, and most importantly, just trying your very best to prepare in the best way possible leading up to your FE exam date. My question for you today is, how do you know when you're ready to take your FE exam? So will you ever feel 100% ready to take this FE exam? And what we're gonna also talk about is what can we do or what steps should we be aiming to achieve leading up to our FE exam? And what can we do in our preparation to feel somewhat ready to give this exam our best shot? So this is what we're gonna discuss today. Essentially, the whole idea is when are we ready to take the FE exam? First of all, you're never going to feel 100% ready for this FE exam. So I don't think anybody ever feels 100% ready for such a big exam. And this is something that I want you to avoid. Let's try to avoid this and avoid that mindset in general. Being 100% ready or being perfect, perfecting all topics, it's impossible. And this will likely just overwhelm you and probably lead to a burnout because this is impossible, feeling that 100% ready or perfecting all the topics. But what we can feel instead is being somewhat ready. So I know when I took my FE exam, I did my content review stage, covered a lot of practice questions and concepts. After that, I extended that to doing pr practice exams. So I did at least three practice exams and those practice exams helped me build my stamina for such a long exam. So for most of us, this is probably the longest engineering exam that we will ever take. Then we will move into the PE, which is gonna be longer. So we have to build our stamina and this is why practice exams are so important. Then after that, I knew I felt somewhat ready. No, somewhat ready. I knew I'm somewhat ready to give this exam my best shot. Somewhat ready. So what does that mean? So I like to break it down into two different areas. First one is the feeling you have close to your FE exam date. So that gut feeling or the confidence you have close to your FE exam date. Then at the same time, this feeling has to be backed up by the numbers. So the numbers have to back up the feeling you have or the gut feeling that you're somewhat ready or you're ready to take the FE exam. So these go hand in hand, the gut feeling you have, and also it must be backed up by the numbers. In fact, I would say the numbers are the most important to feel somewhat ready to take your FE exam. For example, let's say we have a student that says, I put in a lot of study time, I covered a lot of these FE sections, I'm ready to take this FE exam. Or let's take another student, they think, okay, I had my FE exam scheduled, I'm just gonna go in there and take this FE exam. And one last case, let's say a student says, I had my exam scheduled and my boss or manager told me, just go in there and give it your best shot. So would you say these students are somewhat ready to take their FE exam? I would say no. So once again, these statements are not backed up by the numbers. So what did the student do when they say, let's say they covered a lot of practice questions or they covered a bunch of practice questions or they put in a lot of study time? How do we back that up? So what does that mean? Did they cover each section one after the next in an organized manner where the, let's say they covered the concepts, then they covered practice questions after covering the concept, one section after the next? Did they do that? And we can extend this further into did they do full-length practice exams? And this is exactly what we mean by the numbers. So these statements or thoughts that we may be having close to our FE exam date have to be backed up by the numbers. Let's break down what we mean by the numbers. So the numbers is mainly related to the percent completion in your content review stage. So that content review stage, you may be using, let's say, a textbook, or you may be using a portal or you may be using the direct up course that allows you, let's say, to go one section after the next, one practice problem after the next, and you can check off and it will show you the percent that you completed. So this is what we mean, let's say, by percent completion as it relates to the resource or course that you're using. 
And then we have the very important percent scores. So the scores you're getting, let's say on the bulk of practice questions. Let's say you choose for one section, 10 practice questions, you attempt those, what score are you getting? Or most importantly, we'll talk about this in a bit, the practice exam scores. So are you hitting your target score? Are you hitting that ideal target score? And are your scores consistent after doing full length practice exams? Content review stage. So this is when you wanna cover all of the sections. Yes, I said all the sections, but no, you're not trying to master or perfect all the sections, but you do want to cover all these epi sections in a way where you're being exposed to the general concept, fundamental concept, we're not trying to master stuff, fundamental concept, you're exposed to the theory, you're exposed to new practice questions that you're going to struggle with and do on your own apply the PDF in the handbook and just solve a bunch of practice questions for each section. And also at the end, you're just gaining new knowledge. You're building your understanding. You're building those skills that are relevant to the FE exam. And this all happens in that content review stage. Yes, this is time consuming. It's going to test your patience. It will test your life schedule. Once again, please go at your own pace. You don't have to, let's say, put in five hours or let's say three hours. You know you have work. After work, you want to refresh, maybe start with one hour a day. And over time, you can increase that study time. So you don't want to go too crazy. Just make sure in this content review stage that you pace yourself and adapt it to your life schedule while you're preparing for this epi exam. So in this stage, what's important is you go one section at a time, one practice problem at a time, and you're just hitting that percentage mark. So you're covering all the sections and you're doing practice problems for these sections. And I would say, let's say you're aiming for 70 to 80% mastery for these practice problems that you do in this content review stage. So that is what we mean by the content review stage. After completing your content review stage where you're covering all the sections, learning the concepts, practice and practice problems, and building those necessary and relevant FE exam problem solving skills, now you wanna move into doing full length practice exams. I recommend to all my students to do at least three full length practice exams after completing their content review stage. So the ones I recommend to my students will be, number one, the NCEES practice exam. Get the latest practice exam, and this will be the most important. In fact, don't look at this at the beginning of your review, in your content review stage. Leave it and save it for later. This will give you the most accurate depiction of the actual FE exam because it's made by the people who make the FE exam. So this is number one, and this is the best one. Then I taught my students, do the direct hub full length practice exam. It's gonna have similar FE exam type questions, similar to what you will see on the actual FE exam, and the style of problems will be similar, especially with those conceptual or alternative type questions. So we have that practice exam, and the last practice exam, they choose. So they can choose one from Amazon or pick a specific one someone else recommended. But usually I tell them we do have a lot of additional practice problems in the course. So you can use these and make a practice exam out of these. You have a lot of these, do them in a time condition and use that as your last or third practice exam. So why are full length practice exams so important? So we can make a quick analogy, let's say to a soccer match, a full 90 minute soccer match that we're preparing for. So we know for the FE, we have that content review stage. As we said, we're learning concepts, learning new skills, doing practice problems, and building our general problem solving ability in this content review stage. For soccer match, this might be, let's say, when we're learning drills, when we're doing drills, going around cones, when we're practicing our passing, when we're practicing our crosses, when we're practicing corners, free kicks, when we're practicing tactics as a team. So this we do, let's say, in that review stage, in the so-called content review stage. So we know after building these skills as a team, we know we have to apply it somehow 
to prepare, once again, the end goal is performance on exam day. Or for a soccer match, it's the full length match versus another team. And the way we do that is by doing full length matches or so-called scrimmages. So let's say we do a 90 minute scrimmage, 11 versus 11, where we do a full game, where we're testing how we react, how we apply the tactics, whether we know how to work as a team, whether we apply what we actually learned in the drill stage or content review stage, and we're just building our ability for actual match day. And the FE exam is no different. You have the content review stage, you're building skills, you're getting exposed to concepts, and you're building your problem solving abilities, then you wanna do full length practice exams because the actual FE exam is a full length practice exam. You get that first section, you get the 25 minute break, then you do that second section. So this is where you're building your stamina. You're building your stamina, building your endurance, just to be as prepared as you can possibly be for the actual exam day conditions. And after doing this full length practice exam, we're gonna get that valuable feedback on how we reacted when doing this full length practice exam under that time pressure. How did we react? Did we panic? Did we get flustered? Why did that happen? And at the same time, it's gonna give us feedback on the weak areas that we're struggling with. Did we get stuck on a problem statement instantly? Why did that happen? Is it a concept that we need to review or did we overthink a problem statement? What really happened? Then lastly, it's gonna give us an actual score. So it will give us an actual score. And I would say you should be hitting over 70%. Again, the FE is tested the fundamentals. You don't have to do perfect. You don't have to master everything. We should be hitting, let's say 70 to 80%. And I would say if you're hitting 80%, you're definitely on the right track. So long as that these scores are consistent from one practice exam to the next practice exam. Again, don't just do that practice exam and not review it. Do the practice exam, note down your score, know where you get stuck, and also review the concepts on these practice problems where you got stuck. From there, you can move on to the next practice exam, apply those new skills or what you learned from the previous practice exam and test yourself again, get a new score and compare it to the last one and move on to the third one, get a new score, compare it to all three practice exams. And if they're consistent and you, if you're, let's say, hitting above 70%, I would say that you're ready to give this exam your best shot. In summary, no one will ever feel 100% ready for this FE exam. The goal is to feel somewhat ready. And trust me, you're going to know when you're not ready versus when you feel somewhat ready. And that somewhat ready takes time. That feeling takes time to develop and that will be built over time as you cover that content review stage. So you're covering all the sections thoroughly, you're covering the concepts, you're learning new skills, applying your calculator, building your problem solving ability by doing relevant FE questions. And this takes the most time. So go slow, pace yourself, and adapt your life schedule and work schedule around covering this very important content review stage. So after finishing that stage, we wanna do those full length practice exams. So this will be the most accurate depiction of what you're gonna feel on exam day. So do at least three full length practice exams, see how you're doing, get feedback on where you got stuck, why you got stuck, and then review these full length practice exams to cover where you got stuck or your weaknesses. From there, let's say if you're hitting 70 to 80% on these practice exams, I would say that you're ready. You're somewhat ready and you're ready to go in there and give this exam your best shot.